One of my most cherished possessions. A memento of the past. A golden memory, if you will. This belonged to my grandfather and his father before him. Strange, isn't it? To me, it still holds the same fascination as the day I first set eyes on it. But to those who step into my office here at Mansfield House, its attraction is quite limited. I suppose that's because they see it for what it is rather than what it was. By the way, my name is Essex, Winston Essex. And we have a guest here who once shared the same problem. She visited a house that her mother had bequeathed her. A house that, like this lamp for me, retained an enchantment which only she could appreciate. And fear. Janet? Is that you? Yes, Mother. I'm glad you got here. Let me see you. You look older. It's been a long time. Too long. I know. I'm sorry. Nobody wants to visit a crazy old woman. You're not crazy. No, not now. It's because I'm dying. Did you know that? They told me. I just had to see you. My baby girl. So like me. So like me. I left you the house. Arathusa? Wonderful. Old house. Where I grew up. It's yours now. Your aunt and uncle have been living there. May you be kind to them. Wait a minute. Why is it condemned? Uh, are you a friend? I'm a relative, Janet Walcott. Oh. Well, the place is a mess, inside and out. The wallpaper's peeling, the uh, drains are all plugged up. The whole place is full of junk and rats. We warned them. They haven't done anything, so they have to be evicted. When I was a little girl, my mother used to tell me how beautiful this house was. <laughs> Maybe years ago. Where do you see it now?
crazy maids inside you going to the ball and the men surround them handsome one and all one has got a secret hidden behind her cloak she has been out dancing with a boy she loved all the memories younger than spring or leaves sweetest dreams that ever could be oh. Hello. Yes? I'm Janet Walcott. Your Uncle Jonathan? You're Aunt Hattie, right? Janet, uh... Walcott. Miriam's daughter. Uh, oh, dear, oh. Miriam, how is she? My mother died last week. Miriam's dead. Little Miriam. Poor child. Uh. Here, come sit in the swing with us. We'll visit for a while before you have to go. I don't have to go. There's really nothing for me out there. And I'd like to stay here. At least for a little while. And we've got the house to talk about. What is there about the house to talk about? Could I see the inside? Oh, Hattie, look, there's a hummingbird. Oh. Excuse me, excuse me, please. to talk about the house. Well, I wonder why. It's her house now that Miriam's dead. Oh, dear. I wonder if they'll disturb her. That's not the problem. The problem is, will she disturb them? Oh, hello. Janet? We'll show you the house now. Beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a wonderful house. It's a happy house. We have been happy here, Jonathan. Haven't we? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> of course, we haven't used this room much since my husband passed away. Uh, we, we keep it as a memorial. For my husband, James. And Gray, too, Hattie. Oh, yes, Gray, too. Everything's so immaculate in here, but outside, it's, it's very wild. But we can't bear to abuse anything in nature. We leave all the life outside alone. Forgive me, I know how much this house means to you, and it's, it's beautiful. If you don't get the outside cleared up, you're going to be evicted. Oh, fiddle. Well, there was a man outside tacking up a sign. This property is condemned. We'll discuss it later. Oh, of course. And we'll have some music, too. Come on. It's nice to have company for a change. We've lived absolutely alone since my husband's death. Except for Gray, Hattie. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The butler, he's dead now, too. You know, I really would like to get the grounds cleared up tomorrow. 
so that we can keep the house and you won't be evicted. Would you really think that young man is going to do what he says? Yes, I do. And Hattie, please help me. Well, we could make a day of it. We could have a whole frenzy of cleaning up. Huh, Hattie? Yes, Jonathan. Uh, Maybe that Janet's arrival will bring us grace. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. uh. Darling, we're going to put you in the rose. Sound most cheerful. I suggest you turn the lamp down, but not out. Uh, that way, if you should awaken, you, you won't be startled by being in a strange room. Good night, dear. And thank you. Baby girl, so like me, so like me. <laughs> you, you watch. <laughs> you are trying to get me drunk, Ray. Oh, not a bit of it, sir. <laughs> well, it's not going to work. And I'll... Show you right now. Hmm. Can't miss this. <laughs> Gray, you never were much good at this game. <laughs> Piece of stilton, Mr. Dillon. No, no, thank you, Gray. by name, the same names that are on the tombstones. Do you often walk in your sleep, Janet? I don't know. There, you see? What are your plans, dear? I want to stay here. And I want you to stay. Both of you. Okay. 
again. In another day or two, it'll all be trim and tidy. We're gonna paint the house, and it's gonna be just beautiful again. You see, they just never noticed that the paint was peeling, so would you please take down that sign, please? What about the inside of the house? It's immaculate. It's like a museum. <laughs> they must have had an army in to clean it up. Please. Uh, no rats? Cats. Yeah? Well, I don't know. I'll have to talk to my boss. Will you? <sighs> Want to get a plumber to fix the drains? They will, I promise. Yeah? I wish you luck. I mean it. Thanks. check the drain. And we won't be evicted. Actually, we had the plumber in. And what happened? Well, he didn't find anything wrong with the drains. He checked everything out, right down to the cellar. Well, did he check the cellar? Oh, no. We wouldn't let him. He wanted to knock out a wall. Can you imagine that? We certainly won't let anyone weaken the foundations of this house. You hear that? What, dear? What? That sound. That clicking sound. I've heard it before, Aunt Hattie. our fathers. Beautiful, isn't she? Fifty-foot sloop, the Arethusa. Like the house. Oh, she was a beautiful boat. Only one floor was rats. No matter how much strychnine we used, we never got rid of those rats. they die? The butler and your husband. Champagne. Each was a good man in his way. But addicted to champagne. <laughs> Six bottles apiece was nothing. And of course, to try to walk a deck in a storm. Why, it was lucky Hattie and I get back to port. Then they're not really buried outside? Oh, no, see, dead at sea. Jonathan, remember when they played billiards? The more champagne they drank, the better they played. I remember. What is it, Aunt Hattie? Tell me. Oh, my husband married me for my money. And he drank. And he was a brutal bully. He beat my sister. He might have killed her if Gray hadn't been around to protect her. And now it's bedtime. Here, here's a little tonic that we make ourselves. It's, uh, you take it before you go to bed, help you to sleep. Thank you. There's nothing in all this world as good as a deep all-night sleep without dreams. Come along, Hattie.
baby girl. So like me. So like me. this I was wide awake, clear as anything. I heard the sound of billiard balls. Well, you know, your mother was a dreamer. She had wild dreams. Oh, yes, and she walked in her sleep. Once in the dead of night, we found her up in a tree. I'm not like that. Oh, but it's people with imagination who are dreamers, and restless souls are sleepwalkers. Well, you mustn't be alarmed. It's nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to worry about. And you should be grateful that you, that you are a dreamer, that you have an imaginative, restless soul. Imagine how dreadful it would be if you were to just snore your life away, dreamless. Oh, you didn't take your tonic. Hmm, no wonder you had a fitful sleep. Yeah, now. Bottoms up. You know what I always say when I can't sleep? Oh, it's your sleep all right now. I always say, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John harnessed the horse and all got on. <laughs> Dylan didn't die at sea, did he? What? Why, why do you say that? He died right here. Gray stuck a knife in his back. When you can't tell dreams from reality, you're hallucinating. When people keep hallucinating, they end up in asylums. Do you want to end up in an asylum? Like your mother, she had to be put away. She died in that place. Doesn't that frighten you? Didn't it always frighten you? No! I'm not like her. I'm not. I'm not! Uh, uh, uh. Drink your tonic, child. Sometimes we need a shock to bring us to our senses. We don't want what happened to your mother to happen to you. Oh, no, indeed. No, we don't want that. Well, don't worry about it. You're not alone anymore. You have us now. Luke 
and John harnessed the horse and all got on. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John harnessed the horse and all got on. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John harnessed the horse and all got on. Yes, sir, if I may say so. <laughs> Try your luck. Piece of stilted, Mr. Dillon. No, no, thank you, Gray. My baby girl. So like me. So like me. So like me. So like me. I dropped by to tell you that uh, I can't do any more with the health department. Tomorrow's the deadline. I'm sorry. I thought you'd be upset. Children don't have to turn out like their parents, do they? Uh, I, I don't understand. I never had children. I never got married. I was afraid. Are you okay? The days aren't so bad, but the nights, like last night, it was so real. I heard the sound of billiard balls. I got up, I went downstairs, and two men were playing in the billiard room. And then one of them took a knife and... Damn it! Well, Mr. Collins snooping again. No, I just wanted to tell you that tomorrow was the last day. Fiddle. Tomorrow, the sheriff is going through your house from the attic to the cellar. And if it's still the way it was before, he's going to evict you. Don't let me keep you, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Collins. Good day. No. The doctor's here, dear. What doctor? Why did you call a doctor? Uh, well, I, I haven't actually called him yet. I was about to when I saw you talking to that unpleasant young man. But uh, I want to call him. I want you to have uh, a little talk with him. He's a very wise, gentle man. And I've, I've told him about the death of your mother and how recently you become uh, disturbed. He's a psychiatrist, isn't he? I don't need a psychiatrist. Uh, he, it's not me. It's he, this house, isn't it? He, isn't it? He'll just want to have a chat with you, dear. Recommend rest. And all these fantasies will stop. What if they don't? Oh, they will, my dear. They will, I promise you. Come, let's go indoors. No! I don't want to see him. I won't see him. All right. No, Doctor. Just a glass of tonic. And a good sleep. Mm. Mm, I love the candlelight. It gives it a soft glow. That's why we've never wired the place. Electricity is harsh. Candles and kerosene are soft and romantic. They give a glow to life. Sorry I'm late. I had to stop to see a little friend. She was so lonely, I uh, lingered to cheer her. Her soup plate is in the oven keeping hard bread. Get it, please. You get it. 
I said you get the soup plate. <laughs> I will not. Very well, then. Get it, Jonathan. No. Is there champagne cold? It's on the sideboard behind you. Get it. Get it. What we need around here is a butler. We have a butler. <laughs> you had a butler. But your butler did away with his master, as was requested. In fact, he was paid a most handsome sum of money by, um, I believe it was by you too, wasn't it? Now we have a new lord of the manor. There's not a thing you can do about it, because if you try, I shall divulge why the cellar is kept sealed. <coughs> so, Hattie, old girl, you get me some champagne. Jonathan, old boy, get up and fetch me that hot plate. Won't you join us in a toast, Ray? Toast? To the new lord of the man. That's the spirit. Bottoms up. No.
Oh, dear. How did you sleep? I hope you like scrambled eggs and kippered herring and toasted scones. I'm going to leave this place. What? What's your home or house? Where would you go? I don't know. Well, that's a very important decision. But first, you must drink your tonic. Oh, what a lovely day. In fact, I'd say today may be one of the loveliest ones ever to grace this planet. We actually saw an indigo bunting. Uh, did you dream? Did you hallucinate last night? No. You can tell us. Tell us. It'll make you feel better. I dreamed how Gray was murdered. And I dreamed where both the bodies are. Oh, my. I will have to call the doctor. No! I don't want to be put away! Oh, no, 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 dear. Nothing like that. Oh, we promise. We promise. <laughs> don't! Don't lock me in! Don't lock me in! I came to see how Janet is. Uh, yesterday she wasn't feeling too well. Oh, that was nothing. Well, can I see her? Well, she's gone. Gone? She left last night on the bus to New York. Oh, I see. Well, thank you. you look better. And you got the gates fixed. Well, the painters are starting right away. Never mind. Sheriff, everything is going to be like you. Well, if you do everything like you say, then you won't have to move.
You're gone. Of course, I didn't believe him. You're real. Yeah. As far as I know. Please. 
Please help me. If you see it too, then I'm all right. Please. What? What? Look. There. I'm all right. I'm all right, then I can live. I'm sane. Miss Hattie? Jonathan? Could I talk to you a bit? Won't you join us in the swing? Oh! What's that? A nighthawk. They screech like that when diving on small insects and such like. There's the Whippoorwill, the Nighthawk's gentle cousin. Ah, uh, I much prefer the Whippoorwill. Oh, yes. So do I. So do I. Living in the past is not terribly productive, I've discovered. It's too easy to become entangled in its haunting web. It can distort the present, sometimes out of all recognition. But fortunately, most of us can draw that fine line between what is and what was. We can see things as they are, not as they used to be. <laughs> Perhaps that, that isn't wholly a good thing. Perhaps if we could just... Just occasionally drift back to times past and almost forgotten. But that's just wishful thinking, I'm afraid. Oh, and now, here are some scenes from our next adventure on Ghost Story. <laughs> Mr. Mundy, will you keep him tied up at night? No one's complaining. But you. I have the strangest feeling that dog blames me for Frank's death. Huh? 